Hi there, and welcome to Technically Speaking. Today, we're gonna to be having a closer look at the Haltech Power Distribution Module, the PD16, and we're gonna integrate into our loom, and we're gonna remove this fuse box and swap it out with the PD16. Now with the introduction of the Haltech PDM or Power Distribution Module, we unlock a whole bunch more options. Before, in our flying lead harnesses, the only option was to have these four relays and those four fuses down the bottom with the option of the two extra fuses and the two extra relays. And currently, they're what are powering our engine management system, our injectors, our ignition, and our fuel pump. Whereas now, with the introduction of the PDM, we can remove this fuse box assembly, put all of those power outputs through the PDM, as well as any extras like extra fans, extra fuel pumps, all of the stuff that a modern day car needs. And that's why I've got Davo here. So today, we're gonna to do a step by step, pin by pin, swap over where we remove the fuse box from the harness, which is already installed in the car. And we're gonna show you how to integrate that with the PDM and do it seamlessly, nicely, and get it done in one nice, easy go. So to sort of set the scene of what we're working with, normally in the passenger footwell of every car, we are usually have an ECU that's either cable tied or double-sided taped or just floating around on the floor like no, yeah, they're all mounted all, properly. They're all mounted Dave. very, very well. Okay, cool, no worries. Um, what we're gonna do is look at how this is sort of arranged in the car, and we're gonna do it in such a way that we can de-pin whatever we need to de-pin from the ECU and put it into the PDM, and likewise take whatever we need from the PDM relays and put them straight into the connectors, so it is a very nice, seamless install. Typically, what we're gonna be looking at is the PDM and the ECU next to each other, somewhere somewhere in the cabin or the footwell for the passenger. One of the things to note here as well is we're gonna be using an Elite 2500 series ECU as the example, but please keep in mind, any of the Elite platform can be used with the PDM. So an Elite 550, 750, 950, uh, Elite 1000, 1500, 2500. You may even have a Nexus. Nexus with a PDM, with up to four PDMs if you like. One on each corner of the car, because why not? Let's just start with one. And basically, if we can imagine that this is the firewall of the car that we're working with, and this is all in the car. Just keep in mind, this is how it would all be in the car. We're not trying to shoot this in a car because by the time Scott and I and the camera guys were all in the, in the footwell, it gets a little bit crowded. So really, the first thing that we're gonna do is look at lengths. So to deep in and swap stuff over between the units. We may want to look at sensors that are more speed dependent, going directly into the ECU, mm -hmm. and non-critical ones moved over into the PD16. Good examples of sensors that need to be on the main ECU and not through the PD16 are things like shock travel, um, things like the trans brake and the trans brake input button. The reason for that is because these devices are connected via the CAN communications method. That CAN communication method has an update rate of 50 hertz, meaning that there's a signal joined between those devices every 20 milliseconds. So for anything that's gonna need a sample rate faster than that, please wire those sensors to or outputs to the main ECU. Otherwise, they go to the PDM. Righto, well enough talking, let's start cutting. So Davo, where do we cut? I would love for you to do the honor. We're gonna, mm -hmm. Keep you trust me to do this? Yeah, right. absolutely. We, you're supervised, so it's gonna, it's gonna be all right. <laughs> so what we're gonna do, we're gonna keep the length the same. The reason I'm keeping the lengths exactly the same as the ECU connectors is that way it's easy to chop and change and sw switch these pins back and forwards if we ever need to for whatever reason. Um, one key thing to think about is the ignition switch that is going into the ECU. We're gonna move that over into the PDM. So if we have to lengthen that wire with the pin on it, it's just gonna be annoying. It's just extra work. So if we can do it this way, I think it's just gonna work nice and neatly. So if you wanna do the honor and just cut it about there. Of course, before you undertake any of this work, we are gonna take the battery positive off so that we, uh, we're we not running power through the fuse box and creating some fires that we will not be able to repair from here. Beautiful. So from here, your car is obviously completely disabled. No fuses and relays, but We'll pull this, there's so many connections behind here that are about, they're, well, they're going in the bin. Yeah, 
Um, it'd be good to look at what's in the back of this so we understand what work we're saving ourselves. It's actually pretty mind blowing. So when I purchased the PD-16, I opted for the plug and pin set. So you can get this with a box only, which is not gonna get you very far if you don't have one of these connectors. You can buy it with the box and the plug and pin set, which will get you the 34 pin plug and the big DTP four position plug, or you can grab yourself an entire loom. Um, depends what you've got and what you're working with and you know what, what materials you have around you. This may be a really good option. Um, you've got every wire, this is a five meter loom, so you, if you don't use all of the wire in this install, you can then grab yourself a plug and pin set for the next install that you do for somebody, and you've got wire left over. So it, either could be really handy. One of the nice things about this as well, it also uses the Haltech wire colors. So a lot of these colors are custom done by Haltech, can be a little bit tricky to find out there in the wild. So if you do use the flying loom harness like this, the IO report will have all of the wire colors that are in your loom. It's gonna be very important to know what each of these wires does. So the, the diagram for your premium loom that you get with the 2500, you can easily reprint that or find it on their website. So let's start with something pretty easy. Everyone's gonna have one of these, so let's do that one first. We're gonna talk about the injector power. Now, when you're looking at the wiring diagram, you'll see that there's a red with a blue stripe, and I found that in the, in the wiring harness. That was actually pretty easy. Um, I found a thick one, but then I also got a little bit confused because I found a thinner one. Do you wanna tell us what the thin one's for? For sure. So what's gonna happen here, so the thick one is the one that supplies power to our injectors. So it doesn't matter whether you've got four, eight, 16, whatever injectors, that should inject up power supply. However, like Dave said, there is also a skinnier wire here as well. That skinnier wire is a power supply back into the ECU and it does a couple of things. That skinnier wire powers our H-bridge, so it powers our drive-by wire chip. It powers our stepper motor output. So if you've got a four wire stepper motor or if you're using the four green output wires. But most importantly, the reason why this comes back in from the injector power source is this is the 12 volt supply that we do our injector current control against. So that means that we need a power supply that comes from the same source as the fuel injectors. That's the reason why we've got two wires there that are the same color that come from the same sort of pin on your relay as such. Beautiful. So we're gonna strip the ends off both of these and we're gonna put this into a 25 amp output. Um, you may not need 25 amps for your four high impedance injectors because they just won't draw that much current. So maybe you could crimp both of these down into a smaller gauge wire and run it off an eight amp. It depends on the case. For what we're gonna do here, we're gonna put it in a 25 amp because it just makes sense for what we might but need. Like for like of what we're doing, replacing Spot our on. 30 amp relay in our fuse box assembly. Oh, all right, well, let's get into it. I'm just gonna take the end off that and we're gonna do the smaller one as well. And then we're gonna find out how to crimp both of these into one of these. So something that you may not be familiar with because you've wired up your engine harness will be a DTP sized pin. Um, this one is the next level up higher than a DT connector, which you may have used for your coils to make a little breakout or something slightly higher powered um, in your wiring harness. So this, this is capable of running a continuous 25 amps and probably a little bit more to be real. Um, this is a real go-to for any sort of thermo fans or fuel pumps or anything you want a connector that needs high current. This is usually what I go for. So um, grabbing this one, grabbing this pin, we'll just twist these two wires together to keep them together because not everyone has three hands. And then if we simply just place the pin over the top, push it down as far as we can so that the insulation meets up with the bottom of the pin. We'll get our DTP crimper, which we do have available on the Haltech website. Um, there are many different tools that you could use to do this sort of crimp. Put it in, make sure that insulation goes to the bottom of the pin so there's no copper being exposed, and we crimp it down. Oh, that was my hand. First crimp of the day, every day, always, always pops. And that is a good solid connection where both of our wires have gone into the one pin and now we'll be able to put this in the allocated spot for our DTP connector.
I'm going to sort of populate the plugs as I go. Uh, that way I don't lose track of what I'm doing and then we can write it all down or we can also do it all in the software and do it live. Um, this is going to be fairly simple so we'll be able to recap pretty much what we've done very, very easily here. Um, but I'm going to put this into high, very high current output number one. So let's pop that in. We'll see if we can hear it click. Oh, so satisfying. Every time. So good. So pin one. That's done. All right. The next one, we might as well go for uh, ignition. Ignition power, which is right. red with a yellow stripe and it's a thick wire. Well, that one was pretty easy to find. There is no smaller variant of this one. This one's going to be pretty straightforward. And we should always put this one into a 25 amp as well because we could change ignition systems down the track so we may need a bigger, mm -hmm. bigger output. So let's do that one as well. I suppose remembering that as well is that when Davo's doing this, we can measure the current that these outputs are getting used. The downside of that is that the device needs to be operating, so we need to actually run the car up under full load in order to determine how much current is getting pulled. The next install you do on that same particular setup, you might decide to use an 8 amp output on a couple of these pins if it frees up some real estate for you to control something else. Beautiful. Oh, I heard the click of that one. I, yeah. I feel you. That one was good. Mm. I like that one. All right, the next one is going to be fuel pump, which is an orange wire with a blue stripe. Yeah, that one stands out. It's a very, very different wire to all the other ones. Um, so this is what we will be running our existing fuel pump with, which probably ran less than 15 amps, something maybe like a Bosch 044 or a 255 intake pump or something like that. For sure, and things have changed a lot there as well. So like David said, that particular wire there is rated at about 15 amps for the length of the run that we're going to need between the device and where the fuel pump's fitted. But you're onto something there, Davo. So the new style Warbro 525, for example, pulls about 23, 24 amps continuous under high load. So what should we be doing there? Um, what I would be doing is replacing the wire that goes to the fuel pump. If you are already running one of these, and replace it with a much bigger wire. Uh, they recommend something around 16 or 18 gauge wire for that, so that might be something to keep note of. If you are running a big pump with this, it might be an idea to swap this one out. It's a really good point to make because if the wire gauge is too small, a couple of things are gonna happen. The first thing that's gonna happen is that the wire is gonna get warm, but the more important thing that's gonna happen is that the fuel pump isn't gonna be able to get the current it needs to supply the fuel that you expect it to make. So you might end up at your tuners and your 525 simply won't supply the fuel to make the power that you expect it to. So running that thicker gauge wire, even though sometimes that wire gauge, it does look slightly comedy. It does, but it does, it does the job. It does the job for what was available back when this harness was designed, um, which was an 044 pump. That was the go-to. So um, yeah, just keep an eye on that one. That could catch you out. All right, well, assuming this is the right wire gauge, let's put that into a 25 amp output and get to the next one. So, So we're going to put this one into pin number three. Beautiful. That one's all done as well. So the next wire that we have that used to come out of a relay is going to be the ECU power wire. Um, I have what I think is the right wire, which is a grey with a red stripe, and the fuse box is going to confirm that for me. So I can see the fuel pump, I can see the coil wire, I can see the injector power wire, and now we've got that last wire, which is that gray with a red stripe. That's what I have here. That's what's actually gonna power the ECU directly from the PDM. So before we used to power up the ECU directly, now we're actually gonna power up the PDM, and then the PDM is gonna power out to the 2500, and that's how it's gonna turn on. Um, this one's a bit of a weird one. We're not gonna pick an actual output for this one. What I'm gonna do is wire this one straight into the CAN power of the PDM16, so when the ignition switch turns on the PD16, it outputs power straight into the ECU. So you don't have to configure anything on that one. That makes it really, really easy. All right, so that's actually a dedicated output. How much current is that one output capable of? That can do eight amps. So that's gonna power your ECU. It's mm. gonna power your wideband. It's gonna power your dash. If you've got a keypad, you will power that with that as well. You might have an EGT module. It's all gonna, it's gonna power all of those devices. Um, a common misconception is that it actually draws a lot of power to plug in all of these devices. 
once we have the data, we'll actually see that it doesn't actually draw that much once you turn all these devices on. So that's pretty cool to know. What would you guess, so like um, using the PDM, the ECU, like a conventional sort of setup, maybe with a dash and a single wideband, what sort of current do you see drawing normally? So when all of those devices are turned on and the wideband is heating up, which is a pretty important one because that's mm -hmm. when most of that mm -hmm. current draw comes from, I typically see around eight to seven amps, mm -hmm. um, something like that. And then once the wideband has stopped heating up that wideband, it drops down to something like three amps. Yeah, okay, all right, perfect. So no problems at all using an eight amp output to do all that stuff? Definitely not. All right, so different here, this is not gonna be a DTP. What no. pins are on that one? Um, we're gonna use our little ECU style pins, which come in the kit with the ECU connector, which goes in there here. Um, and we're gonna look in the wiring diagram for the CAN power on that one. So we're just gonna put that into pin 25, which is the CAN power. Make sure that the pin reaches the end of the connector, which means you've put it in all of the way. So. Uh, that's perfect. And we can see the lengths are pretty much spot on for where we need to be, so that's fantastic. Um, not many more wires to go. We're, uh, we're really at the end of what we're doing. I think this is where the confusion was for me. When I looked at this, I thought, oh, that is pretty confronting that there's so many wires there, but you forget that a lot of them are switch wires and a lot of them are the power supplies in, whereas for what we're talking about, We've got four relays and we've got four fuses, which means we've got four circuits. We've actually split it now into four circuits here. Mm. And the remaining wires were the power supplies that we had to power them. So the PDM gets its power supply in a different way, which is pretty Correct. cool. So it gets it from the battery positive post on the top, um, which means we've actually freed up these wires out in the engine bay. So where these would normally have gone to the battery power, we actually have these wires that are already run through the firewall, which I know is your most hated oh, project of like getting, yeah, your computer hands, getting your computer hands and dirty and putting these wires through the engine bay, into the engine bay to run a fan or maybe a trans brake or something like that. Having these powers run through the loom means we can go to the other end in the engine bay We can find these wires, which would all be joined on a lug that goes to the battery positive. I'm not gonna worry about the small one for now. What I wanna talk about is the two big ones. We can repurpose these two wires and maybe we could put a big DTP plug on it and we could run our two thermo fans. Whereas running two thermo fans from this relay box, it actually used to be a bit of a mission. You used to have to run two wires from the ECU plug out and around into the two triggers for the thermo fan. The power side's already done for us, but then we'd also have to run another set of battery wires through the whole loom into the fuse box and then crimp them and then fuse them and then out of the fuse back into the pin 30. And then we also had to get two other wires that went from the fans all the way back through the loom neatly into 87 on the top of the relays. We're just gonna use this wire and this wire and they're gonna go to the fans. So much easier. There's literally no work to do here because they're already done. We don't have to be fan, it doesn't have to be fans. We can be using them for anything that is using 25 amps because these wires will be good for it. So pin number one on the DTP connector, we've got our injectors and our injector power feedback. Pin two is where we've got our coils going in this particular install. Pin three, you can see we've got our fuel pump wire, which goes directly to the fuel pump. And then four, I've used our old battery supply wire that used to go to the fuse box, and I've repurposed that to maybe run a thermo fan. As you can see on the side of the plug, they are numbered. So if you're not sure by looking at the diagram, it's very easy to reference off the connector itself. So in order to lock this connector off, because we're all done, we're gonna take the wedge or the cheese or locking tab or whatever region you call it, uh, we're gonna take that simply place that in. If you've crimped it all right, it slides straight in. Um, no resistance, no forcing, no tools required. It literally slides straight in and that's it. That's how easy it is to crimp that connector. So we've got our two leftover outputs, which used to go from the ECU A24 and A25, which is our fuel pump trigger and our ECU circuit leftover. So the engine control relay output, we can't repurpose, so we're gonna pull that wire out of the ECU and that's the end of that because the PDM is now doing that job through the CAN network. The fuel pump trigger, a little bit of a different story. 
Yeah, so this could be re repurposed to do anything you need to switch a ground in the car. You might have a transmission solenoid that needs to be grounded. You might have a light that you want to ground instead. Um, so this can be repurposed for many, many different things. Um, for the sake of neatness and mm -hmm we just won't need it in this installation. So we're actually gonna remove it from the equation altogether. We're gonna remove those pins. I'm gonna show you how easy it is to remove these two pins from this equation. Um, but I'm also gonna remove the ignition switch, which we no longer need going directly into the ECU. Another thing to point out with the pink ignition switch wire when you're using the PDM or when you're using the Nexus R5 series ECU is that that pink wire is the switched ignition input, so the 12 or 16 volt input. There is also a power supply right next to that pin on the Nexus and on the PDM. So if it's a fresh install, that's basically the power supply for one side of the ignition switch and the ignition switch itself on the other side. When they join together, that's what powers up either the Nexus or the PDM. In this case, the pink wire already had an external 12 volt supply from the ignition barrel from the car or whatever the case because it was already working in the Elite 2500 install or you know our example install here. So there's no need to use that supplied power supply that's bundled with the pink wire. You can use that 12 volt supply from wherever you like. So the next step, we need to make sure that we've got the unit grounded. We've got the power covered that goes onto the top of the unit, but we've got no way of grounding this circuit. So um, I like to use the ground circuit that comes in the five meter loom. Um, it probably is overkill, um, just looking at the size of it for what we're actually doing here, because we're switching positive pretty much out of this unit. Um, I am a big fan of overkill. I really do like it. Um, I haven't had a problem yet going overkill. So it may be a bit bigger and a bit bulkier, but it just works for me. So I like to go a bit bigger. And look, probably if I can explain a bit about that. So what's happening here is we've got our 12 volt supply going into the top of the unit and that's supplying the 25 amps of power supply or the eight amps of power supply to the smaller or the larger outputs. Davo's massive ground harness here the reason why we supply it with that massive ground harness is because the flying loom has to account for all situations. So the outputs from this device, so the four 25 amp outputs, they can supply high or drive high, meaning that they can output 12 volts, or they can also drive low, which means that they can pull to ground. If you're driving something low, you're gonna need to be able to supply that ground reference, whereas if you're driving high, it'll come from the 12 volt side. So generally with a PDM, you're always switching to power because that's the whole point of it is to reduce the wiring complexity. You don't wanna be wiring some ground side and some power supply depending on the circuit. So depending on the application, you might be able to get away with a lot thinner ground wiring here because all that's doing is turning on the logic in the device and you're not actually switching any loads to that ground. So again, application dependent, but Davo's doing the right thing here by uh, you know, making good for all different applications. So no matter what happens to this in the future, you're gonna have your bases covered. So the very last thing that we need to do to finish off this project is the can. The can wires are not in this loom because the fuse box never needed it. So it could be a very easy one to skip over. And you'll find that both of these things won't be able to talk without this magical lead. So looking at it, there's a couple of different ways you could do it. And remembering that the CAN communication wires, it's two wires. It's the CAN high and the CAN low, which is a white wire and a blue wire using the Haltech wire colors. Davo, I wanna do it using off the shelf parts that I can grab from the Haltech web store. It's got the ECU pins on one end and it's got the DTM four plug on the other end that we use for all of our CAN devices. So we could pin that straight into this connector. Then we're left with that flying plug. It's exactly the same flying plug that's already on your terminated harness. It's the same plug that's on the wideband connectors. It's the same plug that comes out the back of the dash yep. uh, on the can hubs. So everything should just plug in and all you would need is the cable you're holding. Yep, so we'll plug in this side and plug in this side. And we tuck this away. And as a wiring guy, I would then go and sit in the corner and cry because I didn't know what to do with all of this. Davo, what do you want to do? I just want to make it a little bit neater, if that's okay. Um, by all means, grab one of these. The link will be in the video description down below. Um, 
it does make it a lot easier. But if you want to try and make it a little bit neater and you you want to, I don't know. I take pride in your ride. Ugh. That could I, be a shoe. I like it. What I want to do is take this excessive can cable and I want to bring it down so that it's roughly that sort of length. We can just cable tie it up neatly and run it along here. We're going to cut it and we're going to use that can high and can low and then just put a set of ECU pins on that. Just make it nice and neat and then we get rid of all the excess cable that we just won't need. We may not be using this plug on the ECU. We may want to plug it in here on the top of the ECU and then go in the software and change it to this port if that's where our Haltech device is going to be. I might want to plug this into my wideband. I might want to plug this into my can hub. Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. So are we doing it your way now? We're always doing it my way. So I'm going to cut it about, oh yeah, there. Sorry, cutting it was your job. Mm. I'm sure that you do my that. Sorry. Job. <laughs> Sorry. So I'm just going to cut down the insulation a little bit, being careful not to damage any of the internal wires and only cut the outer sheathing. You can see that once you've got it started, you'll be able to peel it back very, very easy. Keep in mind the only wire colors I want from this are the white and blue wires. You see how easy it peels back. I'm not really putting a lot of effort in there. I am pretty strong. <laughs> so I do make it look very easy, but all I want to do is cut those two back. Now, these are going to have power going through them if we're connected up this end. So we do want to make sure that we insulate both of these wires if we're not going to use them so that they don't interfere with each other or the can wires. So it's going to be very important to cut those down and protect them properly with some heat shrink. So it's as simple as crimping on these ECU pins that came with our plug and pin set, just like all the other wires. We're going to simply grip them on, look at the wiring diagram where they go for can high and can low. And terminate and pop them into the plug. That's all done. Can high. And then can low. Normally there is a ground that can be done for the power for the can, which goes next to the can high there. Uh, we're not gonna need it in this case because our can system is already grounded at the other end. So our can hub, our dash, our wideband will all be appropriately grounded as it's already been running. So I've sneakily run the can cable underneath the sheathing just to make it look a little bit nicer and neater. Um, we can simply plug that into our main connectors. Um, a lot of people don't know that this is what we call main connectors and this is the AUGS port, but main connectors, if your CAN devices aren't working, change it over in the software to main and then that will get you up and running. So that, that can be a sneaky one where people get caught out. I gave in Dave. That does actually look a little bit nicer than the way I was doing it. A little bit more complicated because you have to do more skill into it instead it of off the shelf parts, but I do agree it looks nice. Are you more proud of the job? Yeah. Can I um, plug it in? You Please, please plug it in. So now we've got the PDM solid state technology. We've got no fuses to get warm, no relays with mechanical latching. No pins backing out, no uh, wires falling out of pins from vibration. Um, we've now got speed controlled fans and fuel pumps so we can actually pulse a fair pump, for example, or a yep. fan through this device, whereas an old clicker style relay, you definitely couldn't do that. Yep, um, we can run, run trans brakes directly out of this. We've got so many outputs. As you can see in this connector, we haven't actually used any of the ADAMP outputs at all in this installation. Um, that gives you so much freedom to do whatever else you need to do in your car from here. You just need the right sized wire and uh, a bit of confidence to get it done. Well, it's definitely tidied up this harness a lot and I'm pretty excited to see 
more of this sort of stuff in cars in the field because now that we can use so much logic within the ECU to turn stuff on and off and change the way that things work, everything should be a whole lot easier and we should see a lot less auxiliary devices in the cars. That's right, that's it. So that was actually pretty straightforward and it didn't actually take us very long. Um, most of this was talking and planning. Um, getting it done was actually quite easy, so uh, don't be afraid to take it on. It is actually not a very daunting job as much as it might seem. Well, Davo, thanks so much for taking the time to show me and show us how it's done. As always, thanks very much for watching. Catch you in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. If you like this video, smash that like button. We put out a new video every week and sometimes even two. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more awesome content.